Here. Well, let's not go down. Just stay up here, us two. We two. All right, you and me then. <laughs> Darling, you and I. Cut it out. Oh, Nicky, look out, that big plane. Look like you guys got sense enough to stay away till we get down. That's what I'm going to be doing someday, Mary. Driving one of those sky trains. Let's go down and watch it land. Don't worry about me, young woman. I've had as many hours in the air as you. Jim, boys, go! Oh, 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 These people want to get out. Well, come right over here, then. Oh, right. no one wants to see my picture. Oh, yeah. 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 None of that streaming by other stuff. <laughs> You're a public figure. Take my mother-in-law. She's wearing very late. <laughs> Don't rub it in. I got tired of changing styles years ago. Who's <laughs> got a cigarette around here? Right here. I bought an entire new wardrobe in New York, didn't you, Mrs. Governor? Well, I bought this hat. Wouldn't wear it on Halloween. Oh, Nicky, look. Gentlemen, I'm supposed to rescue me this hat. That's yours, I hope. Smart boy, Elkins. This hat happens to belong to the governor's wife. Oh, the governor's wife. Hey! I've got a very important engagement. Thanks so much. I remember being told once, never chase your own hat. Someone else will always get it for you. <laughs> May I have it? What's left of it? Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Governor. Will you hold my bag? Hold the mirror so I can see. All right. Thanks. All right. If I may say so, Mrs. Bancroft, that's a swell hat. <laughs> you really like it? Uh-huh. My mother-in-law doesn't. Looks like a soup plate. <laughs> <laughs> that's a knockout. Hold that pose, will you please, Mrs. Governor, with a kid? Now I can see why you want to take a picture. Now just hold it. Nikki, straighten your tie. My girl. Mary Rayburn of the nightclub. Just one quick one. Thank you, Miss Rayburn. Right. She'll hate me. Oh, no, she won't. I don't think anybody could do that, Mrs. Governor. Thank you for that. And for getting my hat. Oh, thank you. Come along, Kate. John will be waiting for us. Uh, just a moment. One of the governor's mother, please. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. This is my good side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now hold it. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye again, and thanks for picking up my hat. Bye. Have you anything to say to your friend? The governor's wife. Wasn't she swell? I suppose there'll be no holding him else being photographed with the governor's lady. Oh, but she was class. I mean real class. She liked you, too. Oh, just a lady killer, that's what I am. Dickie Elkins, ace, pilot, and lady killer. Don't let it throw you, big boy. <laughs> There's only one thing throws me. Look at me. That. It throws me flat. Flat at the feet of a certain party.
He's in, isn't he, Craig? He's in his office, Mrs. Governor. Oh, I'm glad of that. Come, Kate. I'm sorry, but he's busy. Don't be sorry, Craig. A governor should be busy. Uh, yes, ma'am, but... Craig, but... we haven't seen him for one whole week. And we're going to see him now. Who's he talking to? The angel Gabriel? No, ma'am. He's talking to the press. <laughs> Only the press. Only the press. But they're all very anxious to hear the governor's intention. He told them, though, in his inauguration speech. But now he's begun fulfilling them, and the reporters want to be assured that he means to carry out his policy. The battle is on, you know. And we'll all go over the top together. <laughs> Mother dear, you know, I really am busy. <laughs> How things been going? Oh, well. I must have a look at you. <laughs> now, come along, Kitten. We really are intruding. Just a moment. I want to tell these gentlemen something. Anything my son says, you can depend upon. He's a born fighter and not easily licked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, uh, that sounds like a little bragging, doesn't it, gentlemen? <laughs> well, to repeat. I promised as governor to drive these men out of power. They certainly saw her, Mr. Governor. One or two of them boast of political protection. They may be able to control votes, but I don't think they can control me. Uh, have you an appointment, sir? Just pretend you don't see me, my good man. I'm invisible. Just a spirit hovering in the halls of the governor's mansion. Uh, but the governor is busy, sir. That's all right. I'll wait. Uh, your name is... Uh... The name is uh, Gordon. But you'll uh, have to see the governor's secretary, sir. I made my promise to the people to rid the state of these men and what they stand for. And I'll drive out the racketeer if it's the last thing I do. I'm afraid that's all the time I can give you today, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Real gift for expression, hasn't he, I don't go Thank you, Mr. Governor. Come on, boy, let's go. Boy, he's a one fellow. Afternoon, boys. Been listening to fables? Hey, how'd you get in here, Gordon? Don't be disrespectful. Well, how do you like that? All that truth and beauty talk from His Excellency to the press, and in walks the biggest crook in the state. Mr. Governor? Who let you in here? I felt obliged to pay a personal call on the Governor. That's all right, Craig. I haven't met you before, have I, Gordon? I regret to say you haven't. But we might make up for that delay, Mr. Governor. Well, what's it about? Well, first, I want to tell you that I feel slighted. I couldn't help but overhear a little of your talk to the press boys. You might have referred to me personally in that. Give the devil his due, you know. Call him by his right name. Now, hurry up, Gordon. Say what you've got to say. Bancroft, you're making a mistake. You realize, I hope, that my machine helped to elect you. All that pre-election chatter about honesty I took for campaign talk. Oh, oh, did you? But now you're showing off. Public's beginning to take you seriously in this purity racket. Well, I've given them cause. Yes, you have. And I'm here to tell you that I don't like it. You hear that? I don't like it. Gordon, you've got a finger in every inch of dirt throughout this state. Your crooked racing, your gambling joints, your traffic in every kind of vice promotion, have made you a rich man. But you're a dishonest and a corrupt man. And you can't stay in this state while I'm sitting here in this office. I can count on that? Hmm? Oh, yes. You can count on that. Then you can count on this. Before you get much further in this big crusade of yours, you're going to regret it. I can stop you any time I want to. Our talk's over, Gordon. You might think so. But just remember, if you keep this up, you're going to be looking around for a hole. And it'll be so deep, it'll hide you for the rest of your life. Good day, Mr. Governor. Well, well. How do you do, Mrs. Governor? Yes, I've just paid my first visit to your husband. This is very different from old times, isn't it? I trust you won't find our little city too dull for you. But if you should and want a touch of nightlife, come down to Club Gordon. 
That's my name now. Gordon. Goodbye. I haven't seen you since uh, way last night. Now uh, listen, you two turtle doves. I know love is grand, but uh, we're rehearsing. So am I. Dolly, I want you to hear my new song. If it's half as sweet as your smile, it's a symphony. Well, come on, Dave, let's hear it. Someday. Life will be so sweet again. Wherever you travel, no matter how far, I'll follow my heart to wherever you are. Somewhere, when dreams come true, I'll be right there. says it's true, too. Oh, I know. It's just a song with words to fit it, but... Oh, Mary, I wish... What? Hello, kid. Hi, Hello. sport. How's Romeo? <laughs> you two rehearsing the balcony scene again? Again? You mean yet? This is getting unput up. <laughs> well, you can understand it, I suppose. Look at these two. A couple of Rafelsons angels. Would it be out of order to do a little rehearsing around here? The boys have families to support, and I have to eat, too, you know. Oh, well, not necessarily, but go ahead. Come on, Mary, let's have an audition. I got a sponsor for you, the makers of noiseless soup spoons. <laughs> and if you're okay, I'll give you the famous old, all right, all right. Okay, Major. You two go and sit at the table and see how it sounds. Okay, Master. <laughs>
But someday we'll be all Ah, swell, Mary. Oh, thanks, Dave. Gee, you were great. How about a score? All right, all right. Ah, say, you two kids ought to be romping in a rustic glen. Working this joint ain't for you. Why don't you scram out of this place and take Mary with you? Forget about Buck Gordon. You've got your pilot's license now. Did you see the afternoon paper? No. On the first page of the second section, you and the governor's missing. Isn't she swell? Someday maybe I'll be flying her myself. Now, there's your first press notice. You're saving. Think I won't? Any time I've had a picture in the paper, there's been a cop on both sides of me. Yeah. I've been with Buck Gordon for ten years now, and he knows where all the bodies is buried, as far as I'm concerned. But how I'd like to spring you two out of this atmosphere. I want to see you spread your wings and fly like a pair of wild birds. Couldn't we, Nicky? You're okay, sport. I've had that thought in my mind for a long time. Mary knows how I feel about it, too. Well, then, scram. Get out of here. Don't get snared in circumstances. Forget about Buck Gordon. He's Mephisto's double. But notwithstanding, I will now report into Lion's Den. So long, kids. Goodbye. See you later, sport. Hey, I'll take that security. Gordon's busy. No, I got to see the big boss. About what? Why, somebody is putting a lead quarters in this slot of machines. Here, take a taste. No, you eat it yourself. I ain't hungry. I think I bit it once. That's enough. I bit it twice. It's a tooth piece. <laughs> Good joke, huh? I make it up myself. I'm a quick like a fish. Now listen, there's nothing to laugh about. Who would think that people would stoop so low to put lead slugs in a legitimate slot machine? I don't know. Well, why don't you keep your eyes open so those dirty crooks can't cheat the machines? You've got to make good, you know. Well, I can't watch the crooks and the cops, too. Don't worry about the cops. Gordon will take care of them. Oh, I don't know about that. This new governor, he's a plenty tough. And pretty soon, he's going to close to me and Gordon and the whole bunch. Yeah, well, don't let Gordon hear you say that. Ah, I'm not afraid of him. I'm a pretty tough, too. I'm a going inside and talk. And if he says a one word, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say hello. Goodbye, boss. You dirty little worm. Why didn't you do what I told you to do? I couldn't help winning the race. The horse just wanted to run. You just wanted to win. Thinking the glory, weren't you? I, I couldn't have kept that horse from coming in first, Mr. Gordon. If, if my life depended on it, I swear I could. Well, your life did depend on it. I told you not to let that nag have his head. And furthermore, what was the idea of squealing to the judges that I ordered you to throw the race? Why, I didn't. I'm mm -hmm. What do we do with him, Doyle? Anything you say. Get Nicky up here. I ain't sure he's here. Get him up here and hurry. What's up now, Buck? This is the bird who double-crossed us at the track yesterday. Please, Mr. Gordon. Shut up. Chadburn, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. One of the best. One of the best what? Well, I mean, he knows how to ride. And he knows how to crawl. As far as horse racing is concerned, his name is Mud from now on. In fact, the next horse he rides is going to have wings. Get your plane ready. What for? You're leaving for Greenmont Track day after tomorrow, aren't you? Yes, sir. Plan's on the blank. What's the matter with it? Well, uh... Now listen. I let you go in for this aviation stuff because I knew I could use you if you ever turned out to be any good. So don't get stubborn with me. I don't like it. Get your plane fixed if you're not lying about it. Come here. Now here's what you're supposed to do. A 
Understand? And you can fly your plane to Mexico or the North Pole. Anywhere. I don't care. As far as anybody knows, your passenger just disappears. Meets with an accident on his way to another track. All right, Doyle, take him away, but don't let him out of your sight. You'll let me know? Nicky will let you know when he's ready. Come on. Come on. Dirty little double-crossing. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. When do you think you're going? To get some fresh air. Go ahead, Mr. Governor. Go ahead. Oh, hello, Nicky. What's the matter? Come on, get your hat. But, darling, I'm not quite through rehearsing. Please get your hat. I guess that'll be all for now, Dave. Maybe later. Where are we going? Anywhere to get some fresh air. Where are you going? Out. I want Mary to stay here. We've got a date. I'm through, Mr. Gordon. The musicians have gone. But I'd like to hear the song, if you don't mind. Surely you'll grant one of your most ardent admirers that much of a thrill, won't you? Close the door quietly when you go out, kid. We'll have our little audition up in my office now. Beauty and the boss. Someday we'll meet again. Well, there's no time like the present. Come on. What do you like of this race, buddy? Don't ask me. I couldn't pick an apple in an orchard. Tough race, huh? They're all tough. I don't think so. No? There's seven horses in the race, and all you have to do is to pick the six losers to find the winner. That's how I do it. That's a good system. What are you betting on? A uh, brown boy, I think. I ain't got a chance. First time out this season. That's right. He ain't been in a race since last year. Fine. Then he won't be tired. <laughs> See? Just look at the price that the buck Gordon gave him. Six to five and a ten at the one shot. He must think everybody's a lollipop. <laughs> you mean a sucker. Same thing, only a lollipop he lasts long. <laughs> Six to five's a good price on Fallen Angel. Class of the field, you walk it. That's what I'm afraid of. Better he run a little. Uh, to the rumble to look after the road. Race is on, boys. At the three quarters. Hunter Nut by a length. Black Star a half length. Flash three lengths. Into the stretch. Flash wins, Black Star place, and Butternut show. And I go out and jump the odds on them nags that didn't show. What's the matter, getting a soft in the head? Hurry up. How's that clock out there running? Three minutes slow as usual, keeping perfect time. Make the odds on those duds good and long. Got a little balancing, too many winners today in the earlier races. I'll see how high I can count. Tell Nicky to attend to that. Okay. Shut the door, Sicardi. Didn't I tell you there was a pinch to smash those machines before the cops got to them? But boss, when they pinched to my joint, I was not there. Where were you? In the church. Oh, praying for more suckers, huh? Oh, nothing like that, boss. You see, my brother-in-law died, so I go to the big funeral. I was a polar bear. Oh, yeah? Well, you're not mad at me because I was a polar bear. Oh, that's all right. I'll be doing the same thing for you in a couple of days. Sh what? 
And ladies and gentlemen, the Long Meadows Handicap. You've got two minutes to place your bets. Now don't get shut out of this race. Nice here, huh? Say, look at those odds on Fallen Angel, 30 to 1. Why don't you play it? I would if I had my relief check. I was told to bet on Flash. Flash is a dog, don't do it. 30 to 1 on Fallen Angel. Must be a mistake. Nobody makes mistakes around here, only the players. All right, switch them in. Here comes a broadcast direct from the track. There's your cue. Get busy. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are on the grandstand for the Long Meadows Handicap. Better not by a length. Black Star at half length. Flash three lengths. At the mile, position's unchanged. Into the stretch. Still butter nut by a length. Black Star coming fast on the inside. Flash running on the outside. Picking up. Flash moving up. This fast. race has been over for five minutes. Now it's butter nut. Got it by on a straight length. wire. Oh, no, that's the way he's pulling it. Coming fast to the wire. Flash by a head. By the low down. Black star one half. Mm. And butternut. Look at that. Not a nickel left. Five hundred bucks. You ought to have a cop and examine that head of yours. I only lost four fifty. You always were lucky. Buck. Buck, it's happening. So what is it? Come on, talk straight. Powell. Powell's out there with another dick. Powell. Yeah, Powell. You've got a band across Pet Watchdog. It's time to scram, Buck. Well, then scram. Buck, you can't run your business from behind them 30-foot stone walls. Don't worry, I won't have to. Buck is caught up with this. Powell had his eye on that clock. Come on out there and sweep up the windows on that handicap. Go on. Hello, Powell. Hello, Gordon. Just drop in to see how we're getting along? Yeah, that's right. Well, we're getting along fine. Just tell that to the governor. Very interesting clock out there in that other room. Oh, mountain time, eh? Just a clock, not a fine antique or anything like that? Well, it keeps antique time, doesn't it, Gordon? Not that I know of. Then you don't know that it's running three minutes slow. You're wise, Powell. So what? I thought you'd like to know that your nice little plant here is going to be for rent. And so are all your other dives, too. Thanks for the tip-off. Is that all? Yes, that's all. My compliments to the governor and my congratulations. Thanks. Hello, Mary. Hello, Sport. Where's Nick? Right here. No. He's always in here at this time. Haven't you seen him tonight? No, I ain't. I'm worried about him. Now, you don't have to worry about Nicky. He can take care of himself. He looks both ways when he crosses the street. Yes, but so much could happen. Now, the luxury of having somebody worry about you. He'll show up fat and sassy. You gotta hurry up now, you've gone pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You sure look nice. Yes, sir. Thanks, Ray. Some of that scent. You sure smell lovely, Mr. Gordon. You like it? Yeah, have some yourself. Sandy makes an improvement. You're telling me. <laughs> Mary. Nicky. Darling, you're so Nicky. Where have you been? Oh. Walking. Walking? Where? Around. Something's bothering you. What's Buck been after you with? Nothing. 
Nikki, tell me. I can't. Oh. That sounds pretty bad. Mary, is there any reason why... Any reason for what? Well, why Buck can tell you what to do, when you have to stay and when you can go. No, of course not. How can you ask me? I don't know. So many things going on in my head, it makes me screwy. Nikki. I must go now, but don't have bad thoughts ever about me. Did you do it? Look at her up there. Isn't she swell? seen a heard of him since I talked in the office here. I'll fix him. And I've been hanging around all night with that jockey. I don't know where, no way. That's me. But some me? Nicky around? Hey, just come in. Kick him up here. He wants to see you. No, I want to hear this. You'd better go. He means it. Did you? You mean I don't didn't... squirm? You didn't meet Doyle. No. You won't be wanting me now, will you, Buck? No. Something I want to tell you about Mary. You're not going to tell me anything about anything. You're going to listen to me now. No, right? you listen to me. I'm getting out of here not to do anything you put me up to. You don't tell me. I've had enough of what you live in. You can't keep me in it any longer. Oh, those ambitions of yours are just sweeping you off your feet, aren't they? You're going to walk out on me now. You great fella. Somebody important. Somebody big. Somebody decent, yeah. And try and stop me. Like the better classes, don't you? Well, I'll tell you this. I feel cheap. Cheap and dirty when I have to talk to people that are straight, living decent, honest lives. That's a laugh. The people that are straight. Well, point them out to me. Show me. I know them when I meet them. Oh, just instinct. Kind calling to kind. You're forgetting where you came from, aren't you? And you were tougher than the others. That's why I picked you. All right. I've been tough ever since you took over. 
I was tough before, maybe, but I'm not now. Oh, yes, you're a dirty little mealy mouth double-crosser that's getting too big for his pants. So now I'm going to put you in your place so you won't come out of it anymore. Now, listen. I found you in a reform school, all right, but I put you there, too. I put you there to get you tough. You were a nice kid when I took you out of the orphanage. That was the first place I stuck you. Orphanage? Stuck me? Yeah. I had you looked after that way in the beginning. I'm going to use you for the rest of my life to get what I want. That face. It's a gentleman's face. Now I'm going to tell you who you are and why I got you hanging around. I took you away from your mother. My mother? Yes, when you were two. She hated me. Hated you? Yes, you dumb fool. You're my son. I'm your father. How do you like it? My father. And your mother was full of the same goodwill towards men that you're spilling. She was a grand lady. She found out what I was the day I married her. She got a great education through me. And when I got my fill of all that virtue, I took you and beat it. You kidnapped me? Yeah, that's right. Because I couldn't think of any way to hurt her more. I didn't want you then. I didn't have any use for you except to torment her. Who was she? Who was my mother? You're in for a big surprise, son. Your mother is Mrs. John Bancroft. The Honorable Mrs. John. Hang on. You're lying. It couldn't be. But that... that fine lady... No. You'll get used to it. And soon. You said you wanted to use me. That way? Is that what you mean? Now you're beginning to see daylight. Why you're not afraid of the governor? Why you're showing off under his nose? Why you want him to show his hand? My ace in the hole. That's you. No wonder I've always hated you. No wonder you always made me sick. I hate your nasty, crooked face. <laughs> Coming for me, huh? At midnight. I see. Well, that's fine. You stay here till I get back. What are you gonna do? The police are calling on us at midnight. At the height of the festivities. They like it that way. Dramatic. What are you going to do? Just what you think. Bancroft? No, I think it'd be more diplomatic to have a little talk with Mrs. Bancroft first. Yes, I think I'll call at the governor's mansion and have a little chat with the governor's lady. No. And if we don't have a really nice chat, I'll still have time for a few minutes with the governor himself. No. And then I'll still have time to call in the boys of the press and tell them a few things about Mrs. Bancroft that maybe they don't know. No, no, you can't do it. You can't. Tell Conley where I've gone. You stay here. You can't do it. Shut your trap, you dirty, sniveling little rat.
Nick Elkins, you have pleaded guilty to the gravest crime against our laws. Before I pronounce sentence on you, I am going to offer you a chance to speak. Will you tell the court why you killed Buck Gordon? He was no good. I sentence you, Nick Elkins, to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. No! May God have mercy on your soul. John, look at this. Yes, I know. I remember that boy. That day at the flying field. He was so young, so happy. Well, if he'd only offered some excuse, some defense. Nobody wants him to hang. Terrible word, hang. That's a cheerful word to begin the day with. Oh, my dear. Do you mean to say they are really going through with this business about that boy? Of course, the law's not a pastime. <laughs> Pretty how do you do when they begin hanging babies? Oh, that boy's of age. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Rubbish. Nicky, why did you shoot Gordon? I can still do something. It's not too late. Talk, and they'll listen. I said everything I had to say the night it happened. Now I'm ready to go. Please, tell me anyway. Don't ask me anymore, Bill. You're the most stubborn case I've ever tried to defend. Thanks, Bill, for everything you've done. Gordon, that boy's Flint. He's granted. You can't get him to tell you anything, eh? Not a word out of him. That's too bad. He ought to talk now. Yes, my dear? Surely something can be done to save that boy. Oh, Stella, dear, I wish you wouldn't upset yourself so much about this case. You know it makes it so difficult for everybody. Difficult for me. I can't help it, dear. You know what I've been thinking. Oh, yes. Oh, of course I do. Why, well, every woman who's been a mother would think the same way. But I must regard this case as I would any other. That boy must have had a very good reason. To kill a man, the reason must be very good indeed. Yes, I grant you that. Yeah. Oh, bless me, Craig. <laughs> Are the trout running in the corridor, Craig? I was thinking of my vacation, trying a little casting out in the garden, sir. I hope Bill Chase. What, Bill again? Again. Will you see him? Oh, it can only mean one thing. Yes. His client is so young, you know. No motive. Oh, darling, do see him. Oh, very well. Tell him to come in. Uh, but, Craig, you come back in a few minutes and uh, tell me that I have an appointment. Yes, sir. 
May I stay and hear what he has to say? Yes, dear. But I'm sure nothing will come of this session. Bill, have you got good news? Oh, well, well then, then what is it, Bill? John, we're old friends. Yeah. Give me a 30-day stay of execution for the boy. I'll find out why he did it. Oh, well, the court has decided. You know, I can't overrule that just because you and the warden and, uh, and others feel kindly towards the boy. Let me find out why the boy won't talk. It was murder. Here's a kid just past 20. Oh, yes, I, I know. I've heard all that. No one knows who he is. He doesn't even know himself. He, he's the victim of circumstances. That's oh, just I know. it. An orphan. Growing up wildly, in evil condition. Oh, Stella. I'm sorry, dear. You know, Bill, I am your friend. But I'm also the governor of this state. You're that because the people believed in your humanity. Show it now, John. Listen, will you let me bring the boy here? And will you question the boy yourself? No, it isn't done. Then you start it. Yes, John. If he gives one good reason, they'll have to listen. Oh, I can't bear to think of his dying, saying nothing, nothing to vindicate himself. Oh, very well, I'll do as you wish. But remember, you and you too, Stella, you mustn't question my decision. Of course not, dear. You have an appointment, Mr. Governor. No, I haven't. Uh, what? Oh, uh, no, 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 I haven't. Hello? Hello, Warden? Yes. Uh, Warden, I, uh, I want you to do something. Bring him over there? Why, yes, certainly, sir, right away. Well, my boy, there's something up. The governor wants to see you. See me? At his house, at the mansion. Why, what for? Well, that's something I can't tell you. I don't want to go. Why, sure you do. He must want to talk to you, you know, as a friend. Now, don't hold out on him. I don't want to talk. No! Come on, son, get up. It's the governor's orders. All right, Craig. Come in. Take the handcuffs off, Warden. Shall I wait outside, sir? Yes. Oh, oh just as you please. Nicky, I have the governor's permission to bring you here. What for? Oh, it's all right, Elkins. I'm not a detective. Your attorney is an old friend of mine. This is Mrs. Bancroft, Nicky. Don't you remember me? No. No, ma'am. That day at the airport when you picked up my hat. I haven't forgotten you. Uh, Stella, I want you and Bill to leave me alone with this boy for a while, will you? Mrs. Bancroft is very much interested in your case. That's, that's very kind of her. Uh, sit down, Elgin. You know, it's very seldom that a man in your position has so many anxious to help him. You, you, you must realize 
that my having you here is is very regular proceeding. Doesn't doesn't that show you that I'm interested too? Now, if there is any excuse for the crime you committed, tell it to me. I haven't any. Elkins, I don't think you've ever known a father's care or guidance. Now, I, 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 I'm acting in your behalf more as a, as a father than as the governor of the state. Won't you help me? Where did you get the name of Elkins? When I was a kid, running around with a gang. Somebody gave it to me and it stuck. You knew Gordon for a long time? Didn't he know where you came from? From a reform school. He had me sprung. Didn't the people in the reform school know your parentage? I never asked. I never cared. But if you knew Gordon so long, why did you delay in in giving him what you thought he deserved. Hadn't he given you cause for quarrel before? Oh, yes. But you didn't try to shoot him or get rid of him in any other way, in any former quarrel? Well, they weren't as bad as the one we had that night. Oh, then it was something he did, or something he threatened to do that night that precipitated the shooting. Well, we had a real fight. What about? Well, W was it about a girl? No. Well, it might have started that way, but she wasn't the cause of it. Money? Was it money you quarreled about? No. No, I killed him because he was no good. You haven't told me anything I haven't heard before. Now give me one act on which I can base a defense for you. Just one excuse for your act. I haven't any excuse, sir. It's right for me to go. I'm ready. But don't you understand? I can't reprieve you unless you try to defend yourself. Well, I... I can't do anything more. I hope you'll have courage. I tried. I, I did try. But the law says that it must happen. Tom, if I had you to raise again, I wouldn't let you get within a mile of a law school. Oh, Mother dear, please. someone to see you. Nicky. You came all the way up here by yourself. I wanted to. I told the others not to come. I had to see you alone. That's right. That's the way I wanted to. There's so much I want to say. I do too. 
There's only one thing. You know. Yes. And you know, too. You're all. All there ever was for me. Oh. This isn't really happening. It's a dream. That's right, baby. Keep thinking that. But it is real. It's a pretty hat you're wearing. It's new. Nikki, how do you really feel inside? All right. Except when I think of you, and then I feel. Maybe it would have been better if I hadn't come. Um, Easier. No. I had to see you, baby. Don't cry. I'm not crying, Nikki. Forever. Don't forget. Forever. All my life. Here. It's a letter the warden gave me permission to write. I'm giving it to her. A letter, Nikki? Yeah. Show it to the guard. It's for Mrs. Bancroft. Mrs. Bancroft? Okay. Yeah. The governor's wife. Give it to her for me tomorrow sometime. I'd like it that way. From you to her. All right, Nikki. What else can I do? Nothing. Except now. All right, darling, Nikki. I've seen the sweetest thing in the world. Your face. <laughs> you have a long haul back to town, baby. You have to sing tonight, don't you? How's the club? Oh, it's all right. Conley's made a go of it. It's just a play nightclub now. Oh, that's great. You don't have to worry. Just sing. Just sing. Go on back now, baby. Maybe I'd better. Yeah. Turn right around and, and walk away. See? I'm spotting at you. Go on, baby. Oh, I can't. Wait for my sake. Taking a long time to get back. I hate to think what she had to go through telling him goodbye. Oh, don't talk about it. Listen, that's your coming. Just one 
time for it. I knew it. Why aren't you asleep, Stella? I can't sleep. Didn't I say in the beginning it was the wrong thing to have that prison right under our noses? It doesn't matter how near or far it is. It's what those men are doing there. Ending a life that hasn't had a decent chance. You can't get men to use common sense in matters like this. I wonder we women let them go on, tinkering with the world. I can't help thinking if my son had lived, he'd be just that boy's age. That's why John has tried so hard to help him. I realize that. You can't do this poor boy any good, worrying and walking the floor all night. Won't you try to rest, dear? I'll try. Now you must get some sleep. Now remember, not another peep out of you until breakfast time. Good night. Good night.
You know, I'd rather do anything in the world than witness this execution. Therefore, these people return to the water. Come on, son. What are you doing here? I didn't think anyone got up this early unless it was to go fishing. I want to see the governor. That's impossible at this hour. You have to phone for an appointment. But I must see him now. Now, young lady, do as I say or I'll have to call the police. No, I won't go away. I must see him. I've got to talk to him. What is it, Craig? This girl insists on seeing you, sir. Oh, please, sir. It's about Mickey Hawkins. I've got to talk to you. Come in. It's all right, Greg. I hope you catch plenty of fish. Well, what is it, my dear? It's rather hard for me to get started. I'm not quite myself. How long were you waiting outside? Most of the night. What's your name? Mary Raper. I sing in the club work. Nicky worked. I was there the night he killed Gordon. Yes. I had no idea. Oh, come in, my dear. This is my wife. Oh, it's all right, go on. Tell us what you have to. I had no idea of coming here till last night. We all sat around between shows. No one was able to talk much. It's been terribly lonesome without her. I came because... I just had to be near Nick. And the boy was very dear to you, wasn't he? He was all I had in the world. We were going to get married. Last night, the boys at the club took up a collection. It amounted to $500. That's enough, isn't it? He hadn't any relatives, so no one wants him, but... Wants him? Why? Why, what do you mean? I mean Nicky. May I... 
May I claim him? No. I couldn't bear to think of his being put away all alone with no one there. I know of a little cemetery where I could take him and then and I could go there once in a while. How could you hang a grand boy like Nicky for killing a man who wasn't fit to live? Gordon deserved to die. He deserved it. Oh, my poor child. Mr. Bancroft will do as you ask. Won't you, John? Oh, I, I see no reason why I shouldn't. Well, that's strange. Warden? Hello? Warden? Yes. Uh, a young lady, uh, a Miss Rayburn, will come and see you. Uh, it, it's about Elkins. Yes, she wishes to take charge of the arrangements herself for the burial. I've granted her request. Yes, you understand. At the specified time, you will hand to her... What? What's that you're saying? Why, on this line? The private wire? Why, no. Are you sure that it came over this direct wire to you? Why, yes, sir, over this line. Stay of execution at 5.30 this morning. Don't tell me you don't know about it. Come over here at once, Warden. And bring Elkins with you. At once. Incredible. A stay of execution was granted over this wire as coming from me. John, then he has been. He isn't. No. Why do you look at me like that? Miss Raven. I'm afraid that I shall have to ask you to go. Yes, of course. And don't send her away, John. Go up and wait in my study at the top of the stairs. Isn't that all right, dear? Very well. You have something to be thankful for, my dear. Yes. Thank you. Stella. Yes, John. Do you know anything of that phone call? I? How could I? If you allowed your sympathy to carry you so far. That's preposterous. Yes, of course. Could it have been... Oh, no, he... He wouldn't do a thing like that. You mean you suspect the warden? Well, I know how he felt about executing that boy. Oh, no, he wouldn't do a thing like that. We must wait and see if the boy himself knows anything. I don't want to go. I tell you, I don't want to see them again. What is this all about? I don't know myself, son. You'll have to come along. Come in. Yes, sir. Warden, you couldn't have received that telephone call yourself. You had to be with the prisoner in the execution chamber. That's right, sir. My assistant received the call. Naturally, there'd be no point in his lying to me. I trust him, as you know. And the call was on our private wire. Yes. Is it possible our private wire could have been tapped by any confederate of this boy's? Not without our knowing it, sir. Elkins. Elkins! Do you know anything of this unauthorized reprieve? No, sir. Please, won't you send me back and do it now? I can't stand any more of this. Well, I must grant the conventional 30 days reprieve and then get to the bottom of this. The papers will carry the news today, I suppose? Yes, sir. The boys were all there when the call came. They dashed right out. Yeah. I'll make out the necessary papers now. Well, John is granting a reprieve. John! Oh! Uh, Warden, uh, take him back. Please, sir, before I go, I, I sent a letter here. 
A letter? Yes, the girl gave it to me. You wrote a letter to my wife? Yes, sir. Could I... Would you please give it back to me? Uh, I, I just wanted Mrs. Bancroft to know how much I appreciated your kindness and, and interest. I wanted to thank somebody for trying so hard. Would you please give it back to me? I left it in my room. I'll go and get it. Hello. This is a friend of Buck Gordon's. You can tell that governor that Buck Gordon is even with him. Because the kid he hung this morning was his wife's son. Operator, trace that call. Who was it? It was someone who said he was an old friend of Buck Gordon's. What did he say? He said that you might be glad to learn that you... see what's in that letter. Oh, no, sir. No. Maybe something that will explain this case. Stella, dear. What? What is she saying, John? My baby. My baby. Nikki. It was you who put through that call on my private wire. Well, nobody else had the sense to do it. But John said it was you, sir. I said I was talking for you, John. And I told him not to argue. <laughs> I'll go before the Board of Pardons myself and make them see the proper conclusion of this case. <laughs> Hello? 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 Help! You make a pretty good governor, Mother Darling. <laughs> Hello? Hello? 